The world lives out of RGB lighting. And I know if that might not Hey guys, Ibra here with Hardware Connects, and I've been thinking about making this video ever since uh, 2017. But then um, things just started push over. I mean, we saw a lot of um, developments with RGB lighting. And I know we saw RGB lighting with peripherals, then it sort of expanded into PC components. We saw motherboard manufacturers implement them on their motherboards, uh, AIO coolers, air coolers, RGB fans, RGB graphics cards, RGB SSDs. I mean, we just recently took a look at an RGB SSD from Kingston at CES. I think we're slowly moving towards a direction of pretty much having every component with some sort of lighting element. And you know what's even interesting is that gaming companies have started using the term RGB as a premium marketing gimmick uh, to sell two versions of the exact same product. So you'd have an expensive model uh, that comes with RGB lighting and the non-expensive model that does not come with that, yet both of them are pretty much the exact same product. It's just the lighting differences and you're paying a premium for that product. And let's get this straight. RGB lighting is a great feature, and I think part of the reason why a lot of people lean towards that is just because they have the ability to customize the color of individual components to their desire. But there's one major problem with RGB lighting, and that's finding a unified solution uh, to customize the colors seamlessly without having to go through three or four different softwares. Because let's face it, there are a lot of options out there and it's really hard to pick the best solution. So in this video, I'll be breaking down on some of the most popular options that are available in the market right now. And of course, we'll talk about the differences, the benefits, the drawbacks. So let's get to it right after a message from our sponsor. Creativity is fueled by the best instruments. It doesn't always come easy, and in the process, you often realize how important quality is. The RD400 by OCZ gives you quality and speed with M.2 interface, Toshiba NAND flash, and a PCI bracket, making it possible to focus on what matters. Invest in storage that makes a difference with a five-year advanced warranty. All right, so right now, RGB lighting seems to fall into two categories. The first one's completely dependent upon the motherboard vendors and their respective software solutions. For instance, ASUS uses their Aura Sync protocol, Gigabyte has their RGB Fusion software, and MSI does it with their Mystic Light Sync. Now, there are some components that come with native support for these software solutions, and what I meant by that are components that simply plug in directly into the motherboard without having to go through the RGB headers. For example, G-Skill with their beautiful Trident Z RGB memory kit uh, gets automatically detected by Aura, uh, RGB Fusion, and Mystic Light softwares. Graphics cards, on the other hand, are a bit of a hit or miss in some cases. For instance, if you decide to use a Strix ROG-based GPU on an ASUS ROG motherboard, you'd be able to control the lighting using the Aura software designed for the motherboard. Same story goes for Gigabyte. If you use one of their GPUs with a Gigabyte motherboard, you'd be able to control the lighting of that graphics card through the RGB Fusion software. But you can't necessarily do that vice versa because if you plug in a Gigabyte GPU on an ASUS motherboard, you won't be able to control the lighting of that graphics card through Aura because the GPU's lighting just doesn't support uh, Aura. Uh, you'd have to download the dedicated utility software for that graphics card and then, and then control the lighting uh, through that software. Here's a quick example of ASUS's GPU tweak software designed for the Strix ROG GPUs running on an MSI motherboard. If you want to monitor or overclock the GPU, this is what you would use. But if you want to customize the lighting, you'll have to download the Aura plugin app and then customize the lighting effects, the colors, etc. So I know it's a two-step process and it might not seem like a big deal, but if you're really picky about using a unified solution, uh, this is something to keep in mind. Another thing I need to mention are RGB headers that are located on motherboards. It's another option to extend the lighting of your PC. For instance, if you want to add an RGB LED strip inside your case, uh, maybe an AIO cooler or RGB fans that support the lighting software of the motherboard, this is a quick and easy way to set up. Realistically, if you're looking for RGB components, just make sure it comes with compatibility for Aura Sync, RGB Fusion, MSI, Mystic, Light, etc. Also make sure it supports a direct connection to the motherboard for full operation. It'll save you the hassle from going through dedicated controllers, which we'll talk about shortly. Now, most motherboards come with a 4-pin RGB header, meaning you can connect any standard RGB strip to the connector and control the lighting through Aura, Mystic Light, or Azrox RGB LED utility. But be aware of voltages. If you plug in a 5-volt LED strip to a 12-volt header or the other way around, you're just gonna blow things up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it just won't work. Uh, just make sure to check the respective motherboard manual uh, for the voltage readout. 
You may have noticed that I skipped Gigabyte's RGB Fusion when discussing the 4-pin compatibility, and that's because they include a 5-pin RGBW header on their mainstream boards, especially on their uh, Z170 series and upwards. You see, getting a pure white output from a 4-pin RGB connector is almost impossible because you're only working with three channels, red, green, and blue. But when you add a separate white channel, uh, you can take advantage of the 5-pin LED strips uh, like this Cable Mod Hybrid White Beam RGBW strip that comes with an additional set of white LEDs for that extra flexibility when customizing. Now, you could technically connect a 4-pin RGB strip to a 5-pin RGBW connector, but you'll have to calibrate the separate red, green, and blue channels through the RGB Fusion software. I know that might sound confusing, but if you decide to use a 4-pin LED strip on a 5-pin LED header on Gigabyte boards, um, this is something that you'll have to go through. All right, so the next way to approach RGB lighting is through other vendor-specific solutions. For example, NZXT's Hue Lighting by itself is a completely isolated ecosystem and unfortunately can't communicate with Aura and the rest of the motherboard softwares. So if you intend to use one of their Kraken coolers or their Air RGB fans, you'll have to go through NZXT's CAM software to control the lighting and effects. Now, these components use the standard USB 2.0 header that's found on pretty much every motherboard out there to communicate with the software, but uh, you could run into a few issues when you decide to use two or more of NZXT's lighting products. For example, if you decide to use NZXT's Kraken AIO cooler and NZXT's Air RGB fans uh, that require separate NZXT's Hue Plus grid system, uh, you'd need two USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard. But the problem is that most motherboards these days only come with a single USB 2.0 header. So you would have to sacrifice on lighting with one of the components and that's kind of, it kind of defeats the purpose of investing on RGB products in the first place. Now, a quick fix to this would be to get an extension unit and I believe NZXT does offer uh, an internal USB hub extension unit for about $25 uh, and you get three more USB 2.0 headers, which is great. So now you can con connect uh, two of the uh, products from NZXT and you have an extra USB 2.0 header for other components. Now, if that sounds like a hassle to you, NZXT does have another solution and that's this the N7 Z370 base motherboard. This is actually their first motherboard to fully integrate their CAM, Q+, and Grid+, ecosystems. So you don't have to go through uh, buying a separate dedicated controller or whatnot. You can just connect the fans and all the necessary connections to the motherboard, and the CAM soft will automatically detect uh, those components. But unfortunately, there's a steep price to pay for that motherboard uh, because it's priced around $250. So I'm gonna let that sink in for a moment. Corsair does something similar with their RGB components as well. If you take their Hydro Pro RGB coolers, for instance, they connect to the motherboard via a USB 2.0 header, and then you'd use Corsair's Link software to control the lighting and effects. Their RGB fans use the same connector, but it has to go through their dedicated controller, but you'd run into the same issue that I talked about earlier when you're trying to link both the AIO cooler and the RGB fans uh, due to the lack of two or more USB 2.0 headers on motherboards. This is a most common issue if you decide to go with dedicated controllers, so definitely keep that in mind. Thermal Take, on the other hand, does something really interesting with their RGB products. So instead of relying on multiple USB 2.0 headers on motherboards, they use a unified digital lighting controller to control the lighting of their Flow Ring RGB AIO cooler uh, and their Ring Plus RGB fans. Each controller comes with five LED connectors, uh, and if you want to expand that, Thermal Take includes a bridge cable to connect an additional controller, and you can route all of this through a single USB 2.0 header. And I think that's a pretty smart design. On the downside, their software is an absolute mess. The UI looks like Candyland or something that took inspiration from the 90s. I would suggest their software team to take a minimalist approach, kind of like what NZXT's CAM offers, but that could just be me. So at the end of the day, having looked at all the various options for RGB lighting, it's really hard to determine a one-size-fits-all solution. At the beginning of this video, I talked about how motherboards and their respective software uh, protocols uh, can be easily integrated with LED lighting and uh, the rest of the components. For example, drop-in upgrades like memory and GPU would work seamlessly with um, the motherboard softwares. But if you're thinking about adding uh, components that are specifically dedicated towards a separate ecosystem, say, for example, NZXT's Hue lighting and their Kraken AIO coolers, or Corsair's Link software, um, that's just something that you can't necessarily control with these motherboard softwares. And that's the sad truth. There's no real standard being developed for native RGB functionality. That means people could end up with a software for their GPUs, one for their motherboards and its headers, 
one for their attached cooler like NZXT, and yet another one for the RGBs on their PSU or lighting hub. It's a mess. Basically, it seems like everyone is trying to lock you into an ecosystem. Uh, if you want to expand the RGB lighting to your peripherals, I think you should seriously consider investing in a separate ecosystem and just stick towards that. For example, Corsair does a pretty good job syncing the lighting effects from their gaming peripherals all the way to their PC components. So if you want a one-size-fits-all solution, this is something that you could look into. And I think using a dedicated controller would be a feasible option if your motherboard doesn't support any sort of RGB lighting. Uh, say, for example, if you're using a, a Z68 platform or something a little bit older that doesn't come with uh, Aura support or Mystic Light or Gigabyte's RGB Fusion software, uh, you could use these dedicated controllers and rely on th those to get the RGB lighting of your choice uh, because they're all connected to the USB header. But once again, yeah, the lack of USB headers or USB 2.0 headers on motherboards uh, could be a bottleneck when it comes to adding multiple controllers, except for thermal take. I also want to quickly touch base on pricing because if you decide to invest in RGB components, be prepared to pay the premium because they're not cheap, they are expensive, uh, and also make sure to do the proper research before picking these components because so, you know, some motherboards vary from one another depending on, you know, their lighting software and just the way how they work. So make sure that they come with proper compatibility. Uh, and once you do that, then I think you should be good to go in terms of customizing the lighting of the components uh, with just a single piece of software or maybe just two softwares. So what do you guys think about RGB lighting and the different solutions that are available in the market today? Do you prefer going with a motherboard vendor uh, and their respective software protocols or are you more comfortable going with a dedicated lighting controller? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Eber with Hyrule Connects. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.